Hey, comment les affaires? Ça va bien? Un petit peu de café. A little bit of coffee to start our lesson. Hopefully you have a nice cup of coffee with you. And you can have uh, a cup of coffee while we're going through another lesson in Louisiana French. Beginner's Louisiana French. Encore, moi je suis Kirby Jambon. And it's my pleasure to present these lessons for you right now in Louisiana French. Um, I've been doing this for a good while, uh, for many, many years. But I've just recently started doing this, these videos. Hopefully I'm getting a little better at these videos. But again... I don't have the best equipment in the world, but we're going to do our best. For those of you just joining us, um, we um, this I think is our like 13th and, and a half lesson or something like that. Uh, so there are lots of videos you can check out um, on the uh, on the YouTube channel. And if you would like to receive some pa paper documents to go along with it, um, please uh, Facebook message me, and um, I will add you to the chat group uh, Louisiana um, Louisiana French Lessons. And um, and they're uh, they're attached the, the to that chat group. The documents are attached attached there. You can ask any questions. You can uh, you know make any suggestions you might uh, have about some things you might want to discuss in these lessons. Okay, ça va? C'est bon? It's good. All right. Um, just another little point about the the channel. Uh, in the channel, there are actually four different playlists that I have in my channel, my YouTube channel. And one of them is Beginner's Louisiana French. The other three you might see if you visit are written in French. I know many of you have subscribed. And actually some of you in the in the chat group have actually uh, uh, viewed some of the other videos as well. Um, you know, I do teach adult uh, classes in Louisiana French through different um, different means, different programs. And uh, But the other two things that I do very much, well, the thing I do most often is I'm an elementary school French immersion teacher. And so um, you see a little, uh, there's a little playlist with some stories and books that I'm reading for kids. And they're written in French. And because my students learn in French, uh, they spend most of their day in the French language. And so I'm, I read a couple of books for them. Actually, I read only one book, but two parts of the book. I read uh, Vapor Bayou, that book right there. And um, I told them a story that uh, I like to tell in Louisiana French as well. And um, hopefully I can get to get some other books to read, but most of my books are at school and during this time period I can't go to school. But uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll get some more that I could read for the students. Uh, and I also have a section of mes poèmes. I'm also a poet. We've talked about that before. I'm a writer and a poet. I've written uh, three books of poetry. Um, here's one of them, uh, uh, Chercher la chasse femme, which means... Um, which means looking for the midwife, uh, l'école gombo, which is gombo school, and petite communion, which is uh, little communions. And those um, those three books uh, are uh, are available through um, les éditions Tatamar. You can maybe find them um, um, through the the uh, the website for Tatamar, which is a publishing house out of Shreveport, out of Centenary College. Now. Uh, I, and the third section is called Discussion uh, uh, du Français Louisiana pour les Francophones, something like that. And it's basically those are discussions in about Louisiana French in French. Uh, so those are made for folks who are actually native French speakers, either in Louisiana or another country, or uh, persons who studied French um, uh, or have a certain level of French that they, were, they want to discuss these ideas in French. And in those three, uh, those three playlists, um, I will speak in a combination of Louisiana French and international French because of the circumstances. Um, um, with uh, students in the French Immersion Program, if uh, they haven't had a lot of experience in Louisiana French, if they might have, they might have had more of an international uh, French uh, taught to them. So they'll hear both of them. Uh, they'll hear both my Louisiana French and international French. And then, of course, when we're discussing it, in Louisiana, uh, we're discussing it in French, and there may be people who are from not from, uh, who don't are not familiar with Louisiana French. So we'll hear you'll hear some international French in that as well. And when I write my poetry, my poetry, I don't. However, it comes out, it comes out. If it comes out more Louisiana French, so be it. If it comes out uh, with you know a good bit of international French, so be it. So you'll hear both of those things. So just just to make a point that if you do hear something in those in those three playlists, that not, that doesn't mean necessarily it's for sure Louisiana French. But speaking of Louisiana French, let's get to our lesson for today. Last time I asked you to, in the packet, to do page 11, uh, page 11 avec le temps, uh, to use the LSU uh, Cajun French website to, to do page 11 avec le temps. Le temps is the word for the weather. And again, le temps can also mean the time, or l'heure can mean the time, or la foi can mean the time, depending on which uh, 
sense of time you're using. But le temps is the only word we basically use for the weather in Louisiana French. So um, let's try this first word we have there, which is anavalas. Try it. Anavalas. Anavalas is a downpour. Yeah, it's a good Louisiana French word found in Old French, but not found very much in modern French. Anavalas is a heavy downpour, right? And brise or and brise and brise or and brise is a breeze and brise and brise. Mm -hmm. We have two words here for a tornado. You have and colon and colon, which is also the word for a column and colon, and tourbillon and tourbillon. So certain regions will say colon, other regions will say um, other regions will say tourbillon. Um, I was speaking to someone the other day that they had a third word for it, and which uh, I think they were from St. Martin Parish, and they said they say the word tornado, tornado. And I said, well, that sounds a little bit like tornado. And he says, no. So it's not it's not tornado. It's not the English word tornado. It comes from the French. I said, well, really? How? Well, torn, turn, ado, to turn to the back. Um, I said, oh, that's kind of interesting because tor a tornado turns back to front, and torne is the is the word. Uh, the verb to turn, and do is the word for back. So tornado would mean that. So that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure that that's the origin of it or not, but I like that. And one other word I've heard in Louisiana French is a tornado. Yeah, the actual English word, a tornado. So you might hear um, any one of those four words you might hear used for um, a tornado. Uh, all right, heat. The noun heat is la chaleur. Try it. La chaleur is the heat. Uh, that's not hot. Hot is show, but chaleur is the word for heat. Uh, I always thought it interesting. Um, I know how many of you have ever, uh, maybe some of you are from Canada, but how many of you ever visited New Brunswick or Quebec? Uh, in between New Brunswick and Quebec, uh, just south of La Gaspésie in Quebec and north of northern New Brunswick, there's a bay there called La Baie des Chaleurs, which would be the Bay of Heat. Well, I don't know how hot that is compared to Louisiana standards, but maybe for Canadian standards, it is <laughs> it is a bay of heat. But the water I've touched up there was not very hot. But everything is relative, I guess you could say. Huh? Um, hail. I'm sorry, I skipped one. Uh, la glace. La glace is the word for ice. La glace. Okay. Let's do a little side reference here and go off to talk about la glace used in another sense. Okay. Um, La glace is ice. If you ever go to France and you look at a dessert menu, you may see la glace on there, which would which is um, the word they use for ice cream. Now in Louisiana French, the word we use for ice cream is la crème, la crème, which is internationally the word for cream. And we can also use it for cream. If it's a distinction, if you want to make a distinction between the two, you might hear uh, la crème de lait for milk cream, like moi je mets la crème de lait dans mon café. J'aime mon café fort. Mais j'aime mettre la crème de lait là-dedans. I like my coffee strong, but I like to put some cream in it. Um, not necessarily ice cream. Although that might be good. Um, so la crème in Louisiana French is the word we use for ice cream. La glace is the word they use for ice cream in uh, other in France and maybe some other places around the world. Um, you might also just hear la crème glacée or la crème de la glace, la crème à la glace, different versions of ice cream. But back to the word ice, la glace. Okay. Um, hail is la grêle, la grêle. Mm -hmm. uh, neige, uh, this is the noun uh, for snow, la neige, the snow. Le nuage, the cloud, un nuage, le cloud. If you notice I'm using the la in the le, it helps you to remember the masculine and feminine. The le or the un will tell you that it's a masculine. The la or the an will tell you that it's feminine. Now, sometimes you may hear un and une, it's more international, but we typically pronounce that more an and an for the article a an or the number one in front of a, um, in front of a noun. Um, I've heard uh, an and an used in other varieties of French in the world. In fact, I think I was reading a book called Street French that said in, in Paris, you might hear an and an as well instead of un and une, uh, but an and an is the word for a or an, and it, an is the masculine, an is the feminine, le masculine, la feminine. Okay. Um, the word you see after that is the word, looks like the word ouragan, and it may be pronounced like that. More, more, often, more often we pronounce it ouragan. L'ouragan with the L apostrophe, with the, the, the hurricane. L'ouragan, an ouragan, a hurricane. It's the word for hurricane, ouragan. The noun for rain is la pluie. Try it, la pluie. 
If you see it written, they're going to have an L in it. We don't pronounce the L typically in Louisiana French, and uh, in some varieties of, of, of French in the past, it was not pronounced as well. I've noticed that in some old dictionaries and glossaries. La pluie, la pluie. Now, it's the noun for rain. We'll get to the verb in a minute. Uh, the sun, le soleil, le soleil. Mm -hmm. The wind, le vent, le vent. Mm -hmm. All right, the fog, le brouillard, le brouillard. For. Mm -hmm. Now, to rain, the verb to rain is mouiller, mouiller. Mouiller is the verb to rain. Internationally, they would say pleuvoir. Mouiller is to rain. Okay? The rain is la pluie. Mouiller is to, um, to rain. Just a point of, um, of reference, internationally, mouiller typically means to wet. And international French, uh, in international French, in Louisiana, it means to rain. It also, in old Acadian French, they use it as well as to rain. Um, for, for to wet, we say tromper, which internationally would mean more like to soak, but we use mouillé to rain and tromper to wet. Neiger is the verb to snow, neiger. Ça va neiger, that means it's going to snow. Not today in Louisiana, but maybe la bas dans le Canada, but not in Louisiana for sure. All right, now here's an interesting term that we have in French, um, and it's in any variety of French. Um, in English, we don't have a, a verb describing the wind. We have a verb for rain and wind. We say it's, you know, it's, you know, for most things, it's raining, it's snowing, it's hailing. You can most, pretty much understand. But we don't say it's winding. But in Louisiana, but in French, you do. Uh, there is a verb. It's called vente. Vente means to, to wind, in a sense, to blow in, to be windy, to, to have. So we have a verb for that. So we, instead of saying, you know, you can say there is some wind. But typically we say, we would say it's winding, it, yvont, vente, okay, yvont, is the way you say it, or savante, okay. Um, these two words here, brumasse, try it, brumasse, or grimasse, mean to mist, okay. Brumasse comes from a, a, a French word we don't use very often, Louisiana French is called la, uh, la brume, which is a, another, it's a type of fog, type of misty fog, et la brume, and you have brumasse, meaning to be, to mist, to be misty, okay. And you also might hear the term grimace, brimace, grimace. I'm not sure the origin of why grimace is used in Louisiana French. Um, it could be it could be an old word, or it could be because it sounds like brimace, grimace. Because grimace for me, growing up, grimace, grimace means to make a grimace. That means to make a face. You know, grimace, you know, make a face. And or maybe the origin is simply because when you go outside and it's all misty, you might make a grimace. Ooh, ooh, it's like good. So I don't know. Maybe that's why. But. But uh, but you might hear you hear both a brimace or grimace. Okay, it's nice weather out. Huh? What? Ça fait beau dehors. Ça fait beau aujourd'hui. Huh? It's nice weather today. Il fait beau. Huh? Il fait beau. C'est un beau temps. All right. Fait, fait beau or far beau or c'est un beau temps, meaning it's nice weather. C'est un vilain temps means it's bad weather. And instead of using the word for bad there, we use the word vilain, which means ugly. We can use Sam mauvais temps, it's bad weather, but more often than not, you might hear Sam vilain temps, meaning it's ugly weather, it's, uh, to describe bad weather. C'est une belle journée. C'est une belle journée. That means it's a beautiful day. Huh? Now, let's talk a little bit about the verb faire. The verb faire, which you more often, most often, in the present tense, you will hear is the word sound fait. Faire in, uh, t can mean to do or to make. But when it's used with weather terms, when it's used with weather terms, it's, it's simply describing what weather it is outside. Okay? Let me give you an example. Um, for example, if I said, um, if I saw something, if I saw something that I thought was really beautiful, I would say, oh, c'est beau. Really nice looking. Oh, c'est beau. But if I wanted to say the weather was nice outside, the weather was beautiful, I would say, il fait beau or ça fait beau. Okay? You got it? Um, if I um, wanted to say something, if, for example, I wanted to say my coffee, if my coffee was hot, I would say, c'est chaud. C'est, uh, well, c'est pas, c'est pas chaud à cette heure. Well, it's not really hot right now, but <laughs> if I wanted to say it was hot, I would say, c'est chaud. But if I wanted to say, if I wanted to say the weather was hot, I would say, ça fait chaud or il fait chaud. All right. So same thing with cold. All right. It's cold. Like you're touching something that's cold. Oh, c'est froid. But the weather, il fait froid, or ça fait froid. You're going to hear either ça fait or il fait in Louisiana French. Typically, south central, southwestern parts of the state, you'll hear more of the ça fait. Southeastern parts of the state, you'll hear more of the il fait. Il fait or il fait is more found internationally as well. 
And that's and you simply follow by the weather word. Ça fait humide. Il fait humide. It's humid. Okay. Ça fait couvert. Ça fait couvert. Il fait couvert means it's overcast. Couvert meaning the word for covered. Ça fait gris as well. You know, il fait gris would be, you know, it's gray, which meaning it's overcast outside. Okay. Um, ça fait mauvais. Ça fait vilain. Il fait mauvais. Il fait vilain. I mean, it's just bad weather. It's ugly weather outside. Ça fait soleil. Il fait soleil. It's sunny. Okay. Uh, another word you see there is the word uh, imuyas. Imuyas. Muyase is the verb meaning to um, to rain on and off or to drizzle. Imuyas. You can see it comes from the word muye. Muyase. Okay. There are clouds. And let's talk about the way we can say there are or there is in Louisiana French and any variety of French. But it, it typically is written il y a, il y a internationally, but it's mostly pronounced either il y a or just ya. Okay, so you can say il y a des nuages, il y a des nuages, or il y a des nuages, there are some clouds. Il y a du soleil, il y a du soleil, il y a du soleil, there is some sun. Okay, il y a un vent, il y a un vent, there's a wind, il y a du vent, there's some wind. Okay, and then you can simply describe it by using the, the word for weather. You can say le temps est beau. The weather is beautiful. The weather is nice. Le temps est beau. Le temps est couvert. The weather is overcast. The, this, you know, uh, the, um, the weather is, uh, the clouds, it's cloudy outside. You can use any one of these terms. Okay? Et um, moi, je pense que le, le temps va, je crois que le temps va être couvert aujourd'hui. Ça va faire couvert aujourd'hui. It's going to be a cloudy weather I hear in Louisiana French. But, um, but, uh, in, Louisiana, in Louisiana, our weather today in Louisiana is going to be cloudy, I should say. And uh, I don't know what it's like chez vous autres. Um, by the way, let's talk about that little word, chez. Like the word chez, it's spelled C-H-E-Z. Uh, in Louisiana French, sometimes pronounced C without the H. C or chez. And chez is the word you, which means uh, to be at a certain place or belonging to a certain place of a certain place. A uh, good example, for example, chez nous autres or c'est nous. C'est nous, c'est nous autres, chez nous, chez nous autres, means at our place or at our home or at home, in simple, you know, at our home, okay, because nous autres is the word for uh, we, okay. Chez vous autres, c'est vous autres, or c'est vous or chez vous, chez vous, chez toi, c'est toi, all of those is like your place or your home, okay, uh, y'all place or y'all home, so you have that chez. Um, and then you would say, for example, uh, if you want to go to somebody's specific house, like if you were coming, if you were going to, uh, if you were going to Josette's house, you would say, uh, chez, chez Josette or chez Josette. All right. If you were going to, uh, to Pierre's house, you would go chez Pierre or chez Pierre. Okay. Um, uh, someone who has a business, for example, uh, let's say Robert has a, um, a restaurant and he could call his restaurant chez Robert. All right, or c'est Robert, which means Robert's place, his restaurant, you know. You can even use it, uh, for example, if you're going to, you say, oh, je vais aller, um, um, yeah, je vais aller uh, chez le docteur, okay, or c'est le docteur, which means I'm going to the doctor's place, to the doctor's office, and things like that. So you can use it in that sense, that word chez or c'est. So, mais en Louisiane, on dit comme, um, on dit comme dit en, en anglais, uh, a on espanol, mi casa es su casa, or <laughs> in uh, English, uh, our home is your home, we say, um, uh, uh, right, chez vous, c'est chez nous, chez nous, c'est chez vous, I said, say. <laughs> which had, um, chez nous autres, c'est chez vous autres, which is, means our home is your home. And so, oh, everyone these days, most of us are chez vous autres, except those good essential workers, thank you for all you do, merci beaucoup, and for the rest of you, merci beaucoup for staying, uh, following the guidelines, staying safe, resting and uh, rester à la maison and uh, taking care of one another. Okay? So, encore, uh, jusqu'à la prochaine. Uh, soignez-vous autres, soignez les autres. Take care of each other. Bye.